But as their 45 joined the hundreds of other hopefuls, the group were holding two important trump cards. One, they're managed by the same company that launched the careers of Bross and the Pet Shop Boys. And two, they have the kind of image that will guarantee tabloid coverage. So is this guaranteed success? Why is it a man's world? All those yings and yangs, we won't submit to all the show, but it's trash, yo. Just take a leap, creep. It's time to call it war. You better believe it, because we know what we're good for. We all went to the same school together, and so we young school. And um, from there, a guy called David Stanfield, he came around auditioning girls to, to form a group. And um, he didn't know what he wanted, really. And basically, we got the audition mm -hmm. and um, set together a deal for one year with him. He was with an independent record company. And from there, we went around to see different people. And Tom Watkins was really interested in us. Having signed to Tom Watkins' massive management company, the band have received the benefits of the production and marketing team that catapulted Bross to fame and their image fits neatly into the increasingly tabloid tone of the chart. They're pretty girls, for one, which makes them very good picture quality material. I mean, everyone likes a picture of a pretty girl on the paper, uh, none more so than our paper, and uh, they are striking looking. And if they have any talent, which I think they have having seen the demo tapes, then they stand the chance of going the whole way. The band's image will certainly guarantee column inches, but they may have little chance of gaining the kind of credibility that crosses over from singles to album sales. Will anyone take them seriously? We feel that in the, in the business, they're going to get called thin guys, and if they were controlled by men, I think it would make it even more obvious. So I look after them, and we're getting on really well. People are really beginning to respect their manly. They're going to develop, mature a lot. They've all got fantastic voices. They're definitely not just a pop act. But if you treat us right, then the battle's won. We don't want to fight, we just want to have fun. We like older people to like us too, so we last longer. Yeah, because our first single, though, that's quite commercial, and it's got rapping in it. Uh, the album, is, which we've already completed, is actually quite ma they're, I mean, very mature. Some of the songs are very it, ranged as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not obviously not all teenage but stuff. But also, just because we're girls, we don't just want, like, boy fans, so... Um, our words of our song are very feminist, some of them. Yes. So we expect to have a few girl fans too. Whatever Faith, Hope and Charity's plans to widen their appeal, they are working in an increasingly fickle pop market, where fame lasts for two years maximum, and the tabloid adulation turns into scandal overnight. They won't talk to any newspapers. Um, they're, they're pretty outgoing and they always tell the truth. They never lie, so they'll never get into that trap. Um, they muck about with men, but they know exactly what they're doing. They never fall for anyone. No matter how careful the group are, they are set for a period of serious examination in the popular press. And in the current climate, it is the accommodation of Star and tabloid newspaper that really sets the pace of pop fame. They need a thick skin. I mean, obviously, wherever they go now, they're going to get people like me waiting on the corner to find out who they've been seeing, what they've been drinking, and what they've been eating. That's part and parcel of the pop lifestyle, and uh, if they can get over that, and uh, I'm sure they will with Tom in charge, then they'll go far.